Hi, it's Bimerzen with another video and this time I will be removing the manual transmission from a BMW 1 series with N43 engine inside. And that's because when I got this car, this engine had some issues. It would crank, but it would not start always. So I scanned for codes. It turned out that there were some Venus errors. I did some further investigation and I uh, determined that this engine had some oiling issues and it spun some bearings, so there were plenty of bearing material inside of the engine. So that means that this uh, engine has to come out. And to remove the engine, I first have to remove the transmission. So this video is going to be about that. You also have to remove the transmission if you are replacing the clutch or the flywheel. And there are a couple of uh, tricky bits in this procedure that I want to show you and maybe make it a bit easier for you if you are doing this job yourself. So anyway, let's get into the removing of transmission. I already removed the splash covers underneath. They are held on by 8 mm screws. You have to remove them and then the covers come off. Next, I have to remove the transmission and to do that, the manual states that the exhaust system needs to be removed. I will try and do this without removing the exhaust system. I think I will have enough space to do that. I'm going to start by removing uh, the brackets that are attached to the transmission. So this bracket here for the exhaust here at the front. And I'm also going to remove this little bracket that seems to be a bit in the way. These connectors have to be unclipped. Not sure how this connector is removed, so I'm just going to remove the whole bracket and uh, remove the connector later. So to remove this side of the connector, you have to squeeze on this tab here and that will unlock it. Now we can open up this connector here. This connector is a bit tricky to remove. You have to release the two tabs on the side and then you can pull it apart like this. Now I'm going to remove this uh, rear support for the transmission and that should give me some space to remove the bolts from the flex disc. Next, I need to remove these bolts. Note the orientation of this uh, flex disc. There is an arrow pointing towards the driving flange. So when you reinstall this, make sure that it is oriented in the correct orientation. So the arrows need to point towards the flanges. Make sure you get a good grip on the back nuts. They are pretty tight, so take your time. Now I'm going to use a crowbar and I'm going to gently pry away the drive shaft. 
I have to get it over this center shaft here. The drive shaft is now disconnected. Now I have to remove the shifting linkage. And to do that, I first have to remove this clip for this uh, pin. And I have to lift up the clip and then I can push it away. No. <laughs> wow. It took me half an hour to find this little guy. So uh, if you're doing this, make sure that this does not happen to you. I eventually found it all the way here at the back underneath all of this heat shielding and I had to use my magnetic gripper to get to it. So yeah, wow, what a waste of time. Now I can push out the linkage. And I also have to remove the carrier for the transmission. And to do that, I have to remove two clips, one on each side. And to do that, I again have to use my screwdriver and pop open this journal so it unlocks. Then I can rotate it and pull it out. And I have to do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to remove this bracket over here. disconnect the reverse sensor and I'm going to remove the cable from the holder. There's another connector at the top of the transmission. You have to remove it and to do that you have to lift up this little tab and pull on the wires until it disconnects. Now I have to remove the clutch slave cylinder that is mounted on the side of the transmission. I just have to remove the two 13 millimeter nuts, one at the top and one at the bottom. And I have to be careful to do this slowly, otherwise the air might be drawn through the gasket and it will enter the cylinder. So uh, just make sure that you do it slowly. Now I have to remove this 10 millimeter bolt. This will also remove this cover here. Now I have to remove the top bolts on the transmission housing. And that's the one that uh, I can get to. There's very little space here but I was able to make it loose with my ratchet. Now I'm not going to remove this bolt just yet. I want it to be there because I will first remove all the other bolts that are very hard to access. 
so this bolt will hold the transmission in place until I'm ready to uh, remove it. Two more bolts there that are kind of hard to get to, but it is possible with some extensions. I'm using a long extension and universal joint all the way at the bolt and this way I was able to loosen the bolt. So I guess the moral of this story is use extensions and universal joints. There are two more bolts all the way at the top of the transmission that are really really hard to reach. So uh, the best way to get to them is to tilt the whole assembly, the transmission and the engine, a little bit towards the back of the vehicle. So you gain some space between the transmission tunnel and the transmission itself. And to do that, uh, you can just try and loosen up the bolts on the engine mounts. So this is what I did. I loosened these two bolts and then the whole engine kind of tilted towards the back. You can see here that it's quite low. And this way I can reach all the way up and just about feel that bolt over there. And uh, the best way to remove it now that you have some access is to first fill the bolts and then just grab the socket and try and put it onto the bolt. So once the socket is on the bolt, you can reach in with some extensions and uh, you can guide the extensions with one hand and insert it into the socket and once you have that done you can uh, undo the bolt and then the last bolt is of course the hardest one to get to it's all the way at the back at the top so if i reach here and jam my gloved hand all the way in i can just about fill it with my fingers so to get to this bolt, you will have to use a lot of extensions so that you can extend the socket all the way to this side. And here you will have more space to operate the ratchet. It's not easy, but it can be done. I have my transmission jack underneath and I've put two pieces of foam so that it should conform to the shape of the transmission. So now I'm going to pump up the jack. And the transmission started to lift up so I know that it's loaded. You always have to support the transmission when you take it out. Otherwise, uh, if you just remove the bolts and leave the transmission hanging on the clutch disc, it can bend the clutch disc and uh, you will have some issues then. Now I just have to remove the last bolt that is holding the transmission in place. I already have it loosened, so I just have to remove it. Now I'm going to use a pry bar and just gently pry against the engine block. And it's out. Now another important thing to notice is to keep the transmission in horizontal position and especially you have to keep this top side up that's because there's a breather port and if you tilt the transmission you're gonna start leaking oil from the inside so just keep that in mind now i can remove the clutch and the flywheel
I've put a bolt back into the engine block and this will serve as a fulcrum for my crowbar and I have it jammed up into the teeth of the flywheel so this way I can prevent the flywheel from rotating and then I was able to loosen up the bolts using my ratchet and now that they are loose I can just use my power tools and remove them. By the way, there's a special tool for this that uh, gets screwed into this location here. I don't have it, I didn't bother taking the time to make it, I'll just use the crowbar. Try to avoid bringing in the clutch dust. It's really not healthy. Surface of the flywheel doesn't look the best, but that's because the car was standing for a couple of months, so you can expect a little bit of uh, rust here. Let's check the clutch basket. Okay, doesn't look too bad. If you see any discoloration or hot spots, then you know you have some issues. But if you see these little dots, this is not a problem. Now let's check the disc. There's still some material here. But uh, yeah, it's pretty much at the end of its life. If you measure the depth here, on the rivets there should be at least like 0.5 millimeters left and uh, we can see that we probably have yeah we probably don't have much left on this clutch so it's best to replace it time to remove the flywheel we have six bolts that we have to remove and again I have to lock the flywheel with the use of the breaker bar here or if you have the special tool then you can use a special tool. I've also seen people do this with a piece of wire running around and being attached to this bolt so the flywheel cannot rotate. Any method will work. Best to use the cheater bar here. Now that I have all of the bolts loosened, I can remove them with power tools. Now I can use the pry bar again and gently pry away the flywheel. Be careful, it's quite heavy. Now I can do the clutch or flywheel replacement and that's going to be my next video in this uh, N43 series. So check it down below or up in the card. Thanks for watching, consider subscribing and liking, keep zen and continue the art of BMW maintenance.